LGBT people in Nigeria face a lot of human rights violations, a lot of attacks and much more. And you would think that this would create a very close-knit and supportive community. And yes, in many cases that is true, but it is not always the story. My name is Ari Topo and on today's episode of Untold Facts, we will be looking at discrimination, stigma and violence by LGBT people to other LGBT people. We've had about 105 different things. You know, you, you may come out to your friends and to your family, but you may still not have come out to yourself. You don't hold the world an explanation for being who you are. LGBT rights are human rights. Now, somebody called me and said, they said I look gay. I said, how what does gay look like? Mean? Ability to be human, access to care, access to housing, and the There is an agenda. You can continue to stay at your home matter. You do not need any passport. Joining me in today's conversation are two people who both work with the Initiative for Equal Rights and we will be breaking down this conversation. First, I'd like to introduce Deyo Adebi. She is the Director of Research and Knowledge Management at TIERS and we also have a candidate who is a trained HIV counsellor and a Sexual Health and Wellbeing Programs Officer also at TIERS. So thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you for having yes. us. I'm very happy that I'm wearing my contact lenses. <laughs> Let's just start like this, please. <laughs> okay. I'm going to vex and take off my glasses. Vex, right. dude. <laughs> I just won't be able to see, but that's fine. Okay, then just wait. Thank you. <laughs> cool. But thank you so much for coming. Cool. And thank you for talking about something that we don't talk enough about. Mm. And that is the actual violence and stigma, things that go on within the community. I think that when we talk a lot about um, discrimination, we tend to look at it from heterosexual people to the LGBT community. Sure. And there's so much more happening within. So my question would be, why would LGBT people be carrying out acts of violence against one another when they're dealing already with so much from heterosexual people, from the state and so on? Okay, so this is um, very funny, like you rightly said. I mean, we would think um, members of the LGBT community are supposed to like um, be so knitted together to fight the external forces. But it's so um, unbecoming when the, the, the stigma is from within members of the same community. I mean, they say a house that is divided against itself can surely not stand. And this is, um, could be said to um, a whole lot of reasons like um, um, people who are dealing with um, um, self-hate, mm. um, um, self-stigma, Mm -hmm. and then internalized homophobia. Mm. Okay, so I am a member of the community and then I am not um, too proud of myself or I am dealing with certain issues. And then there's someone else who is all out there rubbing his sexuality about and doesn't care about the stigma that comes with it. I could start discriminating against this other person because I mean he puts, I sort of see him like he puts me at risk because mm. every time he goes about, I mean, um, flaunting his sexuality, I get to hear all sort of negative words towards mm -hmm. the LGBT community. and. For those who are still weak, who haven't really come in terms with their sexuality, kind of feel he is not being fair to them because, I mean, they get most of the um, backlashes of the stigma. So mm. there's bound to be that friction, mm -hmm. internalized homophobia. And then, you know, when um, you point an accusing finger at someone, you feel, three of your mm -hmm. finger points right back at you. That means you're three times more guilty or worse than whoever it is you're accusing. So they have to deal with um, so much um, internalized homophobia. So mm -hmm. I think that's just one of the major reasons why um, there's um, interest stigma between members of the same community. Hmm. Do, you, do you have anything to add to that? Well, he kind of said it all. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, it's basically that um, you, this assumption that because you're all members of a marginalized um, community, you're supposed to understand each other mm. and, you know, everyone's supposed to be on the same page isn't true. It's a myth. Mm. I mean, mm. everyone has that problem. I mean, we're here, we're Africa. Well, let's not say we're Africans, but like black people. Mm -hmm. stigmatize the smaller homosexual community within themselves without mm -hmm. realizing that some of the things that they do mm -hmm. is exactly what they complain that other races do to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So there's always that. And then um, there's, um, aside from the internalized homophobia, there's also certain um, ideas mm -hmm. that kind of comes from society as a whole, the, you know, the patriarchal society where mm -hmm. like, you have um, more masculine presenting men mm -hmm. um, being mean to the more effeminate mm -hmm. um, of, you know, and then there's this whole, if you're a bottom, you're looked down on mm -hmm. than whether mm -hmm. you're a top and then you have, you know, twinks and mm -hmm. um, there's, and then there's the usual things that we forget also affects LGBT, like, oh, you're fat as opposed mm -hmm. to you're skinny or, or mm -hmm. you're dark. So mm -hmm. we have all those, the, the anti-blackness, the colorism, the fat phobia, all these things that 
you know our human our nature, human actually. it's not yeah, exactly it's, and you're yeah. pointing out something which is very valid and that is we're talking about oh like the lgbt community needs to not do this but we are talking about human beings exactly. and the same phobias and discrimination and the same um quest for advantage yes. is playing out you know and um, I, I remember there's a quote about women's rights where it says that many times the ones who are carrying out the worst acts of violence against women are other women. Okay. Um, and so do you see perhaps any um, trends where it's people who have perhaps encountered the most discrimination or people who have in themselves had to deal with this that are, are passing this on? Or is there something more complex happening? Well, I would like to see it in that light because, I mean, like I earlier said, I mean, it has to do with those who are still um, having self-conflict, mm. still dealing with some internalized homophobia. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everyone needs like a, sort of like an escape mechanism. So, I mean, if I um, talk you down, I stigmatize you, I sort of get this um, feel-good factors. And the, 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 you want to ask yourself, what is the purpose of stigmatizing in the first mm. place? You're trying to talk this person down or to try to make them conform to what is socially accepted. But mm. then if that doesn't happen, you just keep getting at it just because you want to just believe that maybe someday somehow you would mm -hmm. make them conform mm. and then when that is not happening it goes from being verbal stigmatization to mm -hmm. non-verbal mm -hmm. and then actions and then you could even come up with cases where you could actually set your fellow community members up mm. you could just invite them probably you met someone on um, social media this one is very common with, uh, and with the community we've had cases where um, someone met someone on a social media or dating site and then you're inviting the person over to your place or you're going to meet the person somewhere and then you guys met, talked over a bottle of drinks and then decide to plan how the rest of the day would go like and with the intention of, oh, you're going to meet just one person and then somewhere from the blues, some other guys are springing up from nowhere and then they're beating you up, taking your phones, they're dragging you to the um, ATM machines to extort you, get your... Um, get some money from you yes. and then they will hold hostage your um, gadget like your phones your ipad and they might even force you to even call some of your friends who you know who are members of the community as well you could just call mm. them up, oh there's a party going on here and then you come to the are also you serious? Them as well. yes so i mean it, it's it's really that bad i feel like that there's something very seriously wrong when a human being will go to that extent mm. to carry out an act of violence and that that is Again, you're, it does supersede sexuality. This is not a True. sexuality conversation. Issue. This is human beings um, taking advantage of, um, I would say, the, the unfortunate weaknesses of our society in the sense that LGBT people many times have to, you know, work within safe spaces mm -hmm. or within safe networks and people are taking advantage of yeah. that. So can, can we fix this? Well, um, human nature is human nature, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. in addition to the self-hate, mm -hmm. um, we need to also admit that rape culture also exists within the yes. LGBT community. Okay. Um, domestic violence also exists within the LGBT community. And I feel like it's worse mm -hmm. for them than it is for the heterosexuals because they don't have recourse. I mean, yes, it's bad enough for women, but as an LGBT person, how are you going to explain being raped by a member mm. of your own community? Yes. Because one, there is not being believed, and two, mm -hmm. you think about the stigma that you're Conflict. increasing. Yes. Exactly. Because, you know, especially as a man, because when you say, oh, you know, another man raped me, mm. it already there's already <laughs> that idea heterosexuals have that yeah. all the gay men are out to rape us men. Mm -hmm. And then you now have to come forward and say that I was raped. And then it's like, hey, see, we that said it. Validates it that. validates that, mm -hmm. you know. So um, these sorts of conversations, I feel that they're difficult to have because mm. We're showing an underbelly that right now isn't a. It feels like it's not a good idea. Yes. Because, we, because what we need to fix it is to normalize LGBT to to let people understand. So we're not. We we want to get to a place where we're not talking about the LGBT community as we are now as a small. You know this mm. little. We want to talk about them like regular people. Yes. You know like. We're glasses wearers. Mm -hmm. Someone exactly. was pointing it out one time that really it's a handicap. Wearing glasses is people who wear glasses are disabled. 
<laughs> but we've so normalized that. I, I, you I, know, glasses. What, what's that? What do you mean by this? It's day? true now because if I take off my glasses, I can't I see anything. You're right. Actually. I'm, I'm actually, I can't see. But it's we it, we've gotten to that point that we don't mm -hmm. think about it like that. Nobody's going to say, hey, that glasses person is this because we've gotten to true. that point where, right. you know, and that's what we're looking for. And when we get to that point, I feel like this violence is not going to go away mm -hmm. because humans are humans and humans yes. are fucked up. Mm -hmm. But we're getting, we're, we, we're going to get to the point where it's going to go down because a lot of these cases happen because they know there's that's, no Yes. repercussions mm -hmm. or there'll be few repercussions yes. who are you going to go to exactly mm -hmm. who are you going to report to who are yes. you going to tell that i was robbed because i went on a date with this guy i met yes. online mm -hmm. or oh this girl um told me she really liked me and i liked her back and then i got to her place and i got gang raped mm -hmm. and and then th that whole stigma of i was raped by somebody somebody of, of, my, your, gender. of my gender yes so right now i feel what we, the work is normalized like mm -hmm. let people understand that we're all human mm -hmm. and this offense, like, I don't know how to explain it. And, and it's not even just um, law enforcement. Going to the hospital after yes. mm -hmm. an attack, yes. you know, talking again, to a we're therapist. We're talking about a country where even when a woman gets raped by a man, the trauma of going to hospital oh, God, is, okay. is almost trauma. as bad as the rape itself. Ooh, I'm so triggered. I'm sorry. Because it I makes know. me angry. I know. I know. <gasps> I, I know. <gasps> it's but yeah, so like, this, and, and I, the reason I'm upset is because you just reminded me just how much work Needs there is to, to, to be done. Oh, it's, it's, it's exhausting. It is exhausting. It's, it's exhausting. So it, it comes back to the larger society and how the larger society in its engagement, not just with LGBT people, but across the board, still has very much to do with True. treating people with respect exactly. and value. You wanted to say something? Yes, because I mean, we've, we've also had cases where, um, you know, the thing about stigma is with time, it sort of like fizzles out. Yeah. You know, initially when I started using my recommended glasses, I got stigmatized like, oh, you, have now, you, have now, you now have four pairs of eyes, you mm. know. At some point, I mean, like, I mean, this is for my convenience. Mm -hmm. And then, um, when no, but then I can This, like she said, wearing mm. glasses is something that, yes, you do get. I mean, oh, I'm sure there's nobody that wears glasses. I had that to join the, I had to get <laughs> three. I had, when I was in primary school, I had to form the four eyes club. You can and then I used to go around telling people, you're a two eyed freak. Because they used to Valid. make fun of me because I wear yeah. glasses, you know. But it's gotten to a point where now it's, it's cool. Like people Actually, want to people wear glasses. glasses. Yes. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm like, I'm blind without them. You, 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 you people don't see this. It's cool. So are we now saying that the solution to this then is creating a nucleus of power within the LGBT community and using that as a pushback? I'm not. I, I, I don't believe in power dynamics. I feel that this is my stance. Mm -hmm. And I understand why, because, you know, there's a, there's a point where you are going to need someone with a lot of power. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, how do I explain it? Someone um, um, quoted something to me. Um, this man, I've gotten his name. He, um, he survived the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And then he wrote a book. Mm -hmm. And part of the book, he said that um, the people who will rise up mm -hmm. are, um, to save an oppressed society, an oppressed group, mm -hmm. are usually the ones who are enjoying a privilege. Mm -hmm. Like they've gotten some sort of power, but mm -hmm. because they have that power, they understand the oppression that's going on mm -hmm. that they are not yes. suffering from. Mm -hmm. So I, I get the, the idea that at some point there needs to be some, some level of power dynamic mm -hmm. that allows for the LGB to push mm -hmm. and get to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I'm, a, I'm known as an idealist. I just <laughs> want where we get to a point where we see everyone as a human, human being. Mm -hmm. I want us to get to that point where you don't come with a stereotype. You don't come with this um, stamp of characteristics that I'm supposed to expect from you. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want where we're seeing everyone as a clear canvas mm -hmm. that you then build upon in relation to your personal relationship with that, with person. that person. Not because you've got these preconceived ideas of how oh, one person oh. should be or not. <clears throat> and as long as, and like I said, it's not, the, all of this is not unique to the LGBT it's society. Not, it's, it's not. It's, it's being human. Mm -hmm. But and the idea is with heterosexuals, to a point, they have some level of safety. Recourse. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have recourse. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, your law enforcement will listen to you. To you exactly. Doctors will I help you. That. The mental health, um, you know, people, mm -hmm. you know, there's a community, there's a support group. Like, not, no, 
everybody has a support group. What I mean is, strangers will empathize. That nobody thinks it's nobody is going to wonder. Something out of the yes, ordinary. nobody's going to first flinch mm. at who you are before before, before seeing you. Exactly. I, I know you were saying something, and mm. I just realized that I <laughs> went somewhere else. <laughs> okay. But yes, go on. Okay, so um, we've had cases where clients walk into a health facility to access services. Mm. And then during the course of the interaction with the caregiver, mm -hmm. they get to find out, okay, they get to know about the sexuality. And then like, okay, I think this is good actually punishing you because of your sexuality. And then... How do you start? <gasps> and then the client will be like, okay, can I just survive this day? And right? They don't go back to complete the medication. Of course, of They course. go on the ground and go under um, isolation. And mm -hmm. it's a huge problem because, I mean, we've had cases where... This was someone who was supposed to know, we, we thought was supposed to know better. Better, yes. And then after providing the guy with the um, required services, he went ahead to give him a flyer, like, okay, <sighs> you could come to my church for deliverance, they're going to pray this demon out of you, blah, blah, blah. And this guy had in Alwat and he couldn't go back there to complete his treatment. Mm. So basically what we do is we, um, we do advocacy visits to some of these um, health facilities where we refer our clients to. Mm. And then we also try to sample the opinions of these clients. We refer them like, okay, how was the treatment services? Was yes. it void of stigma, discrimination of whatever type? Mm -hmm. And then we get feedback. And then sometimes when we get not too positive responses, we, mm. we, we do like um, revisit such, fac um, such facility and then let them know what is happening. Because um, the, thing, the bad thing is um, most of the focal person at these facilities are being replaced as time yes, goes on they change them so and they don't have like um structures a special, in place. exactly a special number where you can call if mm -hmm. there's a new person so say you are the focal person at a, a particular health facility once you leave you're going with your own personal mobile number yes. so if i'm referring someone there i need to be sure you're still the person there if you're someone else i need to go there and appraise you of what we do mm -hmm. and then let you um acquaint you with the kind of um clients that we would refer to your facility so when mm -hmm. they come um, the stigma has even gone um, beyond verbal. Sometimes it's just non-verbal, just just mm. like. Mm. It's it's. And then when these crimes happen, sometimes when they're being extorted, I mean, you you don't you don't, you don't want to go to the police to report you this case. You can't go to the you police. Can't. Because, I mean, you can't go in the course the of police. reporting, they will get to know. Okay, yes. this is about so they just abandon whatever the the, the, the fight was or the extortion was all about, and, and then focus and turn on. All so it's, it's, it's double discrimination, it's double violation, it's double trauma, you know, making it even more difficult to, to talk to the people who are actually in a position to, to do, anything. Help. do anything. And I, I hear you when you say you don't like power dynamics, but laws, things don't change unless... Uh, there's a push. Yes. Mm. There's some level there of has to be. There has to be a level, yes, something has to give. And, and so... Already we live in a society, we live in a country where same-sex relationships are criminalized. True. So people are already scared of asser asserting their rights, legal, medical, mm -hmm. any sort of rights. And so even when these things happen, they cannot say to a police officer or a health worker that you have no right to engage with me like that. So how can we empower the LGBT community? It's going to be really difficult in Nigeria because even the non-LGBT community are not empowered. Mm. That's the problem. Mm. We don't, like, the average Nigerian has no understanding of how governance works. I'm going into something, I don't want to do this. I'm just going, to, <laughs> going to try to keep to topic. <laughs> going to keep to topic. But um, I think the way we're doing it now, really, given the environment that we find ourselves in is the best. Mm. I know that a lot of work is being done to, um, um, you know, there's a lot of litigation going on. That, you mm. know, it's good to know. There's a lot of um, advocacy going on. There are different groups around the country that cater to these sorts of situations. Um, where tears, I know, uh, uh, aside from the health, um, the health, no, not the health, the physical health approach, I know mm. that. Um, work has started going into also catering to the mental health true. Yes. of, of true. LGBT um, community members. Mm. So right now, like I said, given what um, the situation we find ourselves in, because really, the the perfect in a perfect world, what we should be doing is fixing laws. We should be addressing the same sex, um, the SSMP, yeah. as the same sex. Sorry, I get tongue tied when I say long things. Oof, yeah. And stop that. But yeah, you know, the, the, the right thing is, you know, you should be fixing laws. We should be addressing, for example, there is no reason for you to have to keep going to a, a health center to reorient 
because mm. Mm. there you should know, be a structure. There should not just a structure. There should be an <clears throat> understanding that if you go to medical school, because I mean, I have a medical background mm. and it was your responsibility that regardless you had to put your feelings aside exactly. and focus on helping yeah, people but, dear, but we've allowed yes we've so allowed so many things to which is why i said values. that you know we're not like the the That's things that we should be in. doing we mm. can't do them because of the kind of society we live in mm. so like i said what we're doing now where we you know there are a lot of um um you know agencies around a lot of you know people have come up yeah. a lot of advocacy groups exist yeah. that like tears that work in these spaces and the the, the sad part is there are not that many we're not well, we're not not that we're not enough we're not enough not it's really. not just that we're many we're not enough mm -hmm. to do like this so, there will be cases that will fall through the cracks yeah. as many as as do do i can has <laughs> okay. i must say your name properly but as many of the cases as i can obviously he's talking about them because these are cases that he you know they, yeah, he's yeah. had to handle he's intervened on and has as much as he could mm. sorted out there's so, there so many that were others. missing so I, I can now from mm. your perspective as somebody who's working with these communities and who's seeing day to day what's happening what are some things you feel we can do at this beginning levels to empower LGBT people and, and use that as the beginning of this movement that deals with some of these issues? Okay, so we do engage uh, members of the LGBT community in what we call like um, community dialogue, okay. which has been done at um, different local government areas here in Lagos State where okay. we engage them and then we talk about trending issues. Mm -hmm. And then so sometimes we do acquaint them with um, some of the um, high risk areas where they could go and get extorted by even fellow members of the community yes. and then we also have um, um, a medium a platform where we also like um, share some of the contact numbers of these um, perpetrators we have mm. the pictures their phone numbers and then mm. there are multiple accounts on different social media platforms where they are on mm. so we just share to them if we hear of such cases like just share with your network yeah. and then we also give out um, safety and security tips. Fantastic. Like if you have to meet someone for the very first time, it's not ideal that you invite them over to your, to place, your place or you go right over to their place. You should yeah. meet in a public space and then try and have one or two of your friends around, just scattered around somewhere and just pretend to be part of the crowd just yeah. to watch out for you to see if anything goes funny. Mm -hmm. And then um, that has helped to an extent, but we still, we, we, there's, there's so much that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. There's really so much that needs to be done. Thank you so much, Akan and Deo, for the great work you guys do with Tears, mm -hmm. for the work that is happening within the LGBT community. This, this conversation was painful in many ways because we're talking about things that affect not just the LGBT community, but, you know, every human being. And that's, that is the crux of this, that when we talk about discrimination or stigma or acts of violence, we're not saying that it is the preserve of a particular community. We are saying that these are things that happen in a society where law and order and human rights are not respected. And that is the larger conversation we need to have here, that we should be able to create a society where your rights are respected, no matter what orientation you have, so that if someone takes out an act of violence against you, you're not afraid to go to the hospital or to go to the police or to find someone that can help. We need to see how we can create a world where people are free to seek help, to seek redress, to complain, to remove a shroud that makes it possible for perpetrators of these acts of violence to feel comfort and confidence in their actions. And we would definitely like to continue this conversation. So make sure you check out our YouTube page, Untold Facts. Have you been a victim of one of these experiences? Is there a person perspective you would like to share we would like you to start join get involved say something and let's talk about this thank you so much for joining us my name is Ari Topo we've had about 105 different you know you you may come out to your friends and to your family but you may still not have come out to yourself you don't hold the world an explanation for being who you are LGBT rights are human rights now somebody called me and said they said I look gay I said how what does gay what look does like that mean? Ability to be human, access to care, access to housing, In education. Case, yes. There is an agenda. We can continue to stay for your own matter. You do not need any passport.